Why do Europeans hate skyscrapers? Europe, although being one of the most industrialized, highly inhabited, and economically wealthy continents, has remarkably few skyscrapers, especially in comparison to Asia and North America. 66% of the continent's 218 skyscrapers are located in only five cities, London, Paris, Frankfurt, Moscow, and Istanbul. Why aren't other important European cities adopted skyscrapers? How they survive without the substantial inner city space and floor area provided by these ingenious structures? And will everything in our increasingly urbanized world soon change? When skyscrapers rose to prominence for the first time in the 19th century, first in Chicago and then in New York, many European towns were already firmly established with big ancient buildings and public spaces, leaving limited place for large new constructions. During this era, the majority of European cities were zoned more uniformly and did not experience the significant demand for floor space in important areas that often drives high-rise growth. Also, as the strength and influence of North America expanded, so did the cultural competition between Europeans and Americans. Americans believed that Europe's class system was antiquated, while Europeans believed that some American ideas were eroding European traditions and way of life. Consequently, each continent grew hesitant to absorb the principles of the others. While North America desired to become the paradigm of a new era, Europe strove to maintain its legacy. This explains why skyscraper development was first slow to catch on in Europe, but it does not explain what has kept the continent back since then. Many believe that, in the aftermath of World War II, European towns would modernize and mimic the towers sprouting in North America. In Western Europe, however, where many towns have lost their monuments and ancient structures, a strong urge to reconstruct what had been destroyed emerged. Europe's reduced population at the period meant that there was little need for floor space, the primary factor driving skyscraper building. Consequently, modest constructions replaced those that could not be preserved or renovated. In Eastern Europe, the Soviet Union's redevelopment efforts consisted mostly of low-rise, repetitive structures intended to rehouse the majority of the people. During this time, the first skyscrapers in Europe began to rise. Not because the economy was improving, but because the Soviets wanted to demonstrate their strength and influence. Even though Brussels has never built a genuine skyscraper, it is somewhat responsible for the paucity of skyscrapers throughout the continent. Without substantial zoning controls, Many city buildings were demolished in the 1960s to make room for enormous contemporary structures with little consideration for architectural or cultural significance. Many important people and architects adopted the term Brusselization and advocated for the introduction of new planning regulations in response to the damage this haphazard urban expansion was causing. These laws drastically restricted the size of new buildings and mandated the restoration and incorporation of existing facades into new structures, therefore protecting the city's cultural fabric. The dispute in Brussels resulted in a widespread distaste for contemporary architecture across Europe, with many viewing them as lifeless or solace. Numerous cities followed similar laws and designated regulated districts, such as La Defense in Paris, to prevent high-rise building away from historic centers. At the beginning of the 21st century, views toward tall buildings were softening throughout the continent as architectural styles shifted away from box-like structures toward more distinctive forms as the globe grew more globalized. Several skyscrapers have risen in London, Paris, Moscow, Istanbul, and Frankfurt since the early 2000s as the demand for business space in these cities has soared. In contrast, smaller European towns with more modest growth have shifted their attention to the environment and enhancing the living conditions of their residents. In recent years, metropolitan regions in Scandinavia and Central Europe have routinely scored among the greatest in the world in terms of sustainability, happiness, and well-being, while maintaining their economic significance within their respective nations. However, urban skyscraper building is no longer only driven by economic expansion or the demand for commercial office space. With 60% of the world's population projected to dwell in metropolitan regions by 2030, residential skyscrapers are gaining popularity, notably in Asia and North America. As many traditional world-based businesses become mechanized, millions are flocking to cities in large urban centers, generating a considerable demand for residential space that is frequently satisfied by high-rise buildings. Europe is not immune to this phenomenon, especially in a largely globalized world, 
and with the continent's ambition to keep up with China and the United States in terms of economic development and prosperity. Consequently, Europe might experience a skyscraper boom in the next decades. Nonetheless, as entire metropolitan centers are now deemed historically significant, and the urge to preserve as much culture and architecture as possible remains strong. The particular problem facing future skyscraper development in Europe is all about the past. What are your thoughts about the European skyscrapers? Do you believe these will be beneficial in the future? Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.